Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with IRAC Veteran 8888. Today we got a cool little video here. We're going to be doing sort of a comparison between the Strybog SP9 and the BNT APC9K. All right. Two very, very similar guns, two very, very different mm -hmm. price ranges. Okay. I picked this uh, particular Strybog up on Big Daddy Unlimited, like well south of 800 bucks with the brace three magazines, in plate, relatively ready to go, pretty much right out of the box, no issues, uh, everything good to go. The Strybog certainly represents a decent price point, a lot of really cool features, and the Strybog shares a lot of lines and overall sort of uh, look and aesthetics to the B&T. Now the B&T is definitely an upper tier uh, pistol. This is certainly a, a uh, Professionals tool, let's just say along the lines of, uh, you know, you're talking a pretty expensive PDW. Uh, it's in line with like H&K and, and thing, you know, the higher, higher priced uh, pistol caliber carbines that are out there. This one is a pistol with the same exact brace, uh, which is the MP5 brace uh, that fits both guns. All right, and I got this particular B&T from Moss. Uh, Michelle up there had it and hooked me up so we can make this video. Uh, magazines, very, very expensive. All right, I noticed I, I got mags for this thing on Big Daddy as well. They were like 38 bucks, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the good guy price. So the mags are double the price as the Strybog. So we can kind of go into this, but, um, you know, we just got done filming the video on the, on the uh, B&T, and, of course, it, the performance was just outstanding, right? So we'd like to kind of compare and contrast and talk a little bit about these guns and give you a little bit of our feelings about each one, and, and hopefully you guys come away understand where we're at on this. I think the first thing, like the, the Strybog is the first gun that we had experience with between the two. And right out of the box, the sights were zeroed right on the dot. Um, now, it did not come with a trial lug adapter. It's just threaded half by 28 up front. So we did attach a trial lug adapter so we could run the Omega 9K, which is kind of our go to pistol caliber carbine can. We like the QD feature of the trial lug. And the thing just shot. It shot great. And the price point that they come into, they're very, very affordable for a wide variety of people. I mean, pretty much anybody can get into a Strybog. This is the same idea that we had with the CZ Scorpion when it hit the market. It was an affordable pistol caliber carbine that everybody could purchase, you know, and there was just a multitude of different accessories that came out for it. And the thing with the Strybogs is you've got similar, you know, a similar like cottage industry that developed around the Strybog. Now you've got companies that are making Glock fed lowers for these. Uh, the construction is very similar. I mean, the, the receiver half up top is basically just an extrusion that's just been finished machine and, you know, with the appropriate cuts and such for the barrel, bolt, charging handle. You've got a full pick rail on top, very similar to the APC, but really like where does the where does that increase in price come between the Strybog and the APC? Because you're talking three times the price of the standard Strybog. Well, a couple of like pros and cons, all right? So just starting with the lower, one thing, I, I do like the fact that on the APC, you do get the ability to change out different grip modules. Mm -hmm. Like if you have your favorite AR grip or whatever, you do get that ability. So there is some modularity in the grip design, whereby this is kind of what you see is what you get. I will say I prefer the safety on the BNT mm -hmm. considerably. I do like how discernible that safety is. It's, it's very, very rugged. And I do like the throw of the safety and the location of the safety lever. The safety lever on the Strybog feels a little bit flimsy. It does. But it does lock in, it does have a very uh, distinctive lock. And uh, it is very simple. And the location of the safety is still very intuitive for those of you that understand AR-15 fire control. So. Mm -hmm. Only a minor, minor difference there uh, mm -hmm. between the two. I do like the texture on the front of the magwell on the Strybog that the BNT doesn't have. It does not have that same texturing. Yeah. The, the APC being a K model, the barrel is obviously a little bit shorter, so you don't have as much real estate uh, under the barrel as you would have on the Strybog. Now, if we had the full-size version of the APC, that would be a more direct comparison. You've got a factory pick mount that's actually machined into the extrusion. Okay, on the APC, you also have factory pick mount on the Strybog right up front. Right. M-lock accessory slots and such as that, non-reciprocating charging handle. Now, however, in the slow motion for the Strybog, I noticed that the charging handle does kind of move back and forth a little bit. We didn't really notice that on the APC, 
This charging handle has a detent or a magnet up front that holds it in place. So definitely a little bit higher quality uh, construction right there, just yeah. to keep that charging handle from kind of bouncing around a little bit. I'd like to see something similar like a magnetic catch or some sort of detent system just to keep that charging handle forward so it doesn't rock back and forth during the firing cycle. Agreed. Um, but suppressing both guns were, I mean, excellent. Not a whole lot of extra gas blowback. They are both nine millimeter blowback. So what you see is what you get. They kind of have a, a heavy carrier, okay, just to keep that bolt closed and keep that explosion contained and everything. Right. Um, but in the accuracy department, both guns shot exceptionally Man. well. I mean, there was no negative comparison there at all between no. the two. Both guns are extremely accurate. I will say in terms of the overall aesthetics of the hardware and the functionality of the hardware, the BNT certainly scores higher points in the Strybog. I mean, everything from the charging handle mm -hmm. and the way that it's spring loaded and uh, you know, it folds forward out of the way and mm -hmm. it's just very robust and rugged. The bolt stop on the BNT just feels much more rugged mm -hmm. and easier to get to with much more discernible texture through and throughout, whereby uh, the Strybog is a little bit more simple of an arrangement, yeah. just a simple stamp part, but it does work. Mm -hmm. um, the magazine release, completely functional on both units. I, I really wouldn't say whether or not one is any better or worse than the other mm -hmm. on either gun. Uh, I will say that, you know, I feel like the backup sights on this gun are a little bit more functional mm -hmm. just because uh, they were dialed in right from the factory and they're nice and low profile, kind of a diopter style. I do feel like the backup sights that come on the BNT stock from the factory leave a little bit to be desired and they're kind of like an afterthought maybe just a little bit. Uh, the BNT is certainly a quality unit and it ate everything we threw in it, no problems at all. Yep. Uh, very, very reliable, accurate, an excellent trigger. I will say that out of the box, the trigger for the BNT is certainly better uh, than the Strybog. Now, does it merit the high price? One could argue. I know um, Geisley does make a trigger for the, the APC. I don't know if there's any uh, aftermarket trigger packs for the Strybogs. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if there weren't. Yep. For the money, I mean, the thing is, you get the three magazines with the Strybog along with the back plate and the brace. I mean, that's, that's kind of hard to say no to. And I find it funny that like on Big Daddy Unlimited, these mags were like $18.99. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these mags are $38.99. Well, why should those mags cost more? Let's okay, look. now let's just, just kind of look at the mags a little bit. Now, one thing I notice is that the mags on the B&T are easier to load. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that the overall length seemed to be much less of a problem um, with different rounds in the BNT mag than it did in the Strybog. I noticed that some profiles of bullets and some bullet weights in the Strybog, the magazine would load, but I almost feel like maybe the overall length might be a little long in that particular round and might cause the mag to have a little bit of a, of a feeding issue. Although we couldn't really readily present that issue, it just seems that it would be an issue. On the BNT, there's certainly a nice room, uh, amount of room in there, a nice roomy overall length mm -hmm. uh, to make uh, room for just about any length of uh, projectile mm -hmm. you might want to run, especially in the factory uh, regard. I would say so. I mean, it's kind of the same thing you look at when you think about it like a Glock mag. Okay, you buy a standard capacity like Glock 18 magazine, they're right around the $40 price point. But those are also metal line mags as well. And right. I think that's probably why you know the, the Army decided to go with the pro version of the APC with the Glock fed lower because the magazines, you can leave the metal line magazines loaded for a much longer extended period of time without having to worry about the feed lips starting to expand. I mean, look at PMAGs. P mags, you know, sometimes come with the small, um, they have a small uh, cap, okay, that loops over the top and it presses down on the top round in a loaded magazine to keep the pressure off of the feed lips for good reason because over time they'll expand and then you'll have feeding and extraction problems and the mag will pretty much just be toast. Um, you know, the, the polymer mags, I've just never been a huge fan of them for like extended periods of. Um, just time just leaving them loaded uh, for like say a defensive gun or something along those lines not to say that I mean it couldn't be a very very good defensive unit um, I just would worry about the mags being kind of the weak point between the two systems but that's been alleviated because both systems have available Glock fed lowers for them. there you we, go we always go back to the Glock mags but they are a very well respected and well used and um, just a fantastic magazine you know, with a good long track record. 
The one thing I will make mention of as well is that the B&T does come with the tri-lug in the box ready to go. Yeah. So you can add your tri-lug. They're both threaded half by 28. Uh, we had to get the adapter for the Strybog, so that was one extra expense that we had to come up with. Yeah, I mean, they're $40, you know, give or take. Yeah. Um, just the fit and finish of the APC, I would say, is probably a little bit better than the fit and finish of the Strybog. Um, just the, the anodizing on the aluminum is much finer. Oh, it's, cer it's certainly better fit and finish. You I know, mean, it, the quality's there. It's just very, very expensive. I will say on the polymer magazines, I have heard that on the Strybog, they're going to be offering metal feed lip magazines, maybe like a metal line magazine eventually. And it's also worth noting that the SP9A3 is coming out very, very soon. They're about to start uh, getting imported, and that is the delayed roller blowback version of the Strybog and I believe they're offering it in a K version. So that'll be, be neat. Yeah, it'll be really cool to be able to compare K to K. Mm. Um, that'll be really fun to see this gun in a K, especially if it comes out in a similar price point mm. of the original Strybog. You know, these guns got a lot of hype when they first started getting imported. And I honestly, you know, after playing with them a good bit, I can see where mm. the hype is at because they really are great pistol caliber carbines. It reminds me a lot of the way that I felt the first time I shot a CZ mm -hmm. and I was so happy with the Scorpion. Like the Scorpion was everything I wanted in a pistol caliber carbine. Um, but we wanted to compare these two guns just because they are so similar. Um, you know, is the BNT the winner over the Strybog? Look, I'll put it to you like this. If, if you weren't worried about cost, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the BNT is clearly a better gun in terms of the build quality they certainly are fantastic and for an out of the box ready to go pdw if you weren't concerned about money absolutely the bnt is is definitely an awesome gun that i would probably prefer out of the two but then again who wouldn't that's kind of like comparing i don't know a ferrari to a ford f-150 like each each hey. car does you know something <laughs> different right but they're two very different yep. type of things in terms of the expense right now the strybog though I would still trust my life to this mm -hmm. gun, no problem. Um, I think that one thing the Strybog wins in is value right mm -hmm. out of the box, and it's obtainable, it's approachable, it's affordable. This is a great way for somebody that wants to get into a pistol caliber carbine and not spend a ton of money. Mm -hmm. They can still protect themselves, protect their family, and not have to spend a lot of money. Yeah, I think the biggest thing just comes down to you know breaking the bank or not. I mean, if you just have to have if you just have to have like the Swiss made, you know, Cadillac, okay, of the two, uh, you know, guns, uh, yeah, go with the APC. I mean, because it is, it is the Mac Daddy. It really is. It is a but, fantastic gun. Um, very, very smooth. Like, but shooting, shooting both of the guns, I will say that the APC is probably a little smoother in overall feel. You know, the recoil impulse, just everything about it. Great trigger. I mean, everything. And the trigger, too. Uh, they're, they're somewhat AR compatible. I've seen where some people have modified uh, aftermarket AR-15 triggers to drop into the APC lowers. You're not going to get that on the Strybog, but like Eric mentioned, possibly we might see some aftermarket triggers come out for the Strybog down the line yep. uh, to give it a little bit more crisp feel. I just, I love a good quality AR trigger, especially like a good two-stage. Well, the thing is, um, is Geisley makes a drop-in trigger for the APC. It's a single stage, but they do make a drop-in for it, and oh boy. You can't go wrong with the Geisley. But I don't know how much more like accurate you can get with this thing. I mean, usually a good drop-in trigger will add a little bit of you know precision to your your setup. But man, I don't know. It, it'd be hard to improve upon like both of these guns, even as they sit right now. But um, it's just like I said, when like the when, when the Scorpion came out, it changed the pistol caliber carbine market. And I think the Strybog has done that again. It's kind of the yep. next chapter of the pistol caliber carbine market. You know, for, for nine mils. I will say I love the generous ejection port mm -hmm. on the Strybog. Oh, it's and got also a, the radiusing too. Like yes. everything's nice and radius mm -hmm. between the two. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's got a nice generous radiusing, a large ejection port. The ejection port is considerably uh, larger on this particular gun than the APC. And I will say too, the bolt on the APC 9K is a little bit tough to work back mm -hmm. and forth. It's it's hard to pull back whereby the bolt on the standard Strybog way easier to pull back. Now it's still, you know, you got to pull on it but that's one thing I noticed. And I do like the throw of the bolt. So that's just a preference thing. Mm. Now I will say a lot of people keep saying, oh, well the BNT was military contract, this and that. Yeah, 
heck yeah, you want what the U.S. military is using mm. for their, uh, you know, type uh, personal protection detail? There you go. Mm. But this is used in military service too in Slovakia. Yep. So this is a Slovakian military service uh, type of arrangement, especially when the SP uh, nine. A3 comes in, mm -hmm. I believe that's what they're using is the delayed roller blowback version. But Yeah, that'll be really curious to test that one out. Both the guns have their pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the BNT is like a Cadillac. I mean, I love both these guns. And I, I don't want someone watching this video to go, oh, well, they like this gun more or that gun more. I love both of these guns, each for their own type of reason. And I like the Strybog because it is a great gun. It's accurate. It is super, super cool for what it is, and it scratches that type of itch without having to spend BNT money. Yep. I will say, and don't take this the wrong way, guys. If, I don't know, a gun got stolen out of my vehicle or someone broke in my house and stole something or whatever, let's just say theft or loss or something like that. If I did have to have a gun stolen or lost or destroyed or messed up or I get in a car wreck, whatever the heck may happen, life happens, right? Mm. I'd rather lose an $800 gun than a twenty-eight hundred dollar gun. I mean, I mean, because that's that's a big that's hard to replace. Yeah. That's that that's you're crying huge tears replacing that. This, it, it's not like, it's not that you wouldn't be angry that you lost it, but at least it's a little bit less to bite off to have to replace. It's a little less painful, <laughs> so to speak. It's still painful, <laughs> believe me. You, nobody wants to lose a gun or anything like that. Heck no. It's like losing a child. Right? You don't want to lose a you don't want to lose your little child, right? But anyway, uh, you know both <laughs> both of these guns are awesome. I would certainly recommend either one. Mm. They they both represent very different price ranges. But we want to make this video because people have been asking us to compare and contrast. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Maybe learned a little bit of something. There's really a lot more comparisons between the two than there are you know total differences that really uh, give like a negative light to either particular platform. Yeah. I mean, they really are both great, great guns. They really are, man. I mean, it's such a hard decision. I mean, okay, if you were to scrub <laughs> all the markings off the Strybog and put BNT on it, I mean, or if you handed someone this and it said BNT on it and you didn't tell them mm -hmm. it was a BNT, would they still shoot it and go, wow, this is great? So it's, there's always like mm -hmm. that perception of value and then there's value, right? Mm -hmm. And, and people don't know why something's expensive. They just assume because it's expensive, it's good. And I think there's there's a huge difference there in opinion, right? Now, obviously, Swiss-made machine like the B&T, I mean, it's Swiss-made. Of course, everything's going to be super precise on this. Mm -hmm. Very, very high quality. But I think that there, there certainly is a misconception there. So hopefully mm -hmm. we clear some of that up. Uh, thank you guys for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, those of you who purchase man cans over on our website, uh, those of you who go over to Ballistic Inc., pick yourself up a t-shirt. There's lots of ways that you can directly support the channel if you like what we do. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We'll see you soon. Many more videos on the way. See you guys.